We're back in the studio, and that was my interview with Val O'Shea from the University of Glasgow in Scotland. Now I'm here with my two guests, Sue Dong, experimental particle physicist from SLAC, also Peter Graham, theoretical particle physicist from Stanford Physics Department. Great to have both of you on the show. Looking forward to an interesting conversation. Yeah, thank you for inviting Great. us, and uh, uh, very glad to be here. Yeah, thank you. Sue Dong, let me start with you. I asked Val O'Shea the same question, but I'd like to get your view. Why is the Higgs boson causing so much excitement in the world of physics? Why is this such a big deal? Well, interestingly enough, I think uh, theoretically it was the last piece of uh, uh, the standard model actually putting the whole theory together. And it's also the last piece we actually found experimentally and it took uh, something like 30 some years to find it and to finally put the whole picture together. And so it was, uh, we s almost assumed it's been there mm. and should be there, but uh, it is a fact that eventually you reached that point after seeing this last piece, of course, is a big excitement for all the people actually looking, uh, doing the experiments or actually making this happen. Why did it take so long to find it? I think uh, Peter Higgs, uh, the British physicist, first postulated it maybe around 1964. What, why was it so hard to find? The way to produce them, unfortunately, is actually not so easy. You need uh, machines, actually accelerators of very high energy, and also the rate of producing them, unfortunately, is not high enough to allow you to fish them out very easily from the experiment. And even at uh, LHC, when you produce them at a high enough rate, there are also a lot of other things actually produced with it, and you actually have to uh, piece out all the background you don't want and to try to find this in the middle of uh, a big pile of debris, let's say. We're going to talk about the ATLAS experiment some more, but first we have a short video illustrating how the ATLAS program works. Let's go ahead and roll that tape, and then we'll be back. According to the standard model, all the elementary particles should be massless. The current best theory to explain how these particles attain their mass is called the Higgs mechanism. This is a simple demonstration of how the Higgs mechanism functions. It states that there is a scalar Higgs field which permeates all parts of the universe. Particles with no mass, such as the photon, do not interact with the Higgs field at all maintaining their kinetic energy and passing through at the speed of light. A particle with mass, such as a quark, interacts with the Higgs field, which slows it down and converts some of its kinetic energy into what we know of as mass. In order to prove the presence of the Higgs field, the Higgs boson must be created and detected. This, however, has proven to be a difficult task, as the Higgs boson is predicted to be a massive particle requiring huge amounts of energy to produce. The Atlas Detector is our tool for detecting the Higgs. It is situated at CERN in Geneva, Switzerland, and will be used to detect the high energy collisions produced by the Large Hadron Collider. It measures 44 meters long, 25 meters in diameter, and weighs in at 7,000 tons. Two beams of protons will be accelerated in opposite directions close to the speed of light and collided at the center of Atlas. How do you create a massive particle such as the Higgs from only two small protons? This comes down to Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared, which tells us that mass is just another form of energy. By speeding up the protons, they acquire additional kinetic energy. The protons at the LHC are accelerated to 99.999999% the speed of light and acquire a total energy of 7 tera electron volts. This, combined with the energy of the other proton, traveling in the other direction, produces a collision with the energy of 14 tera electron volts. Upon a collision, all this energy becomes hundreds of different kinds of particles. It is in these conditions which, if it exists, the Higgs boson will be created by the LHC and detected by ATLAS. Well, that was our video about the ATLAS project. You know, I didn't quite understand the relationship between the Higgs boson and the Higgs boson field. Do you need a Higgs boson to have a Higgs boson field, or can you have the field without the boson? The, the, the one way to see it is it's a, the Higgs boson itself is some kind of excitation of the field, and maybe actually Peter, maybe is better one, the theorists actually comment on that particular aspect of that. Okay, yeah, go ahead. 
Sure. So, uh, yeah, actually, that's, that's the right way to say it. Um, uh, if you have the Higgs field everywhere, it's maybe a bit like having a pool in your backyard. That pool is there. Uh, you know, if you'll fall into it, you'll feel it. But mostly the surface just lies flat. The Higgs boson, the actual particle that they're trying to produce at the LHC, is like a little ripple on the surface of that water. So if you threw a rock into that water, for example, you would produce this ripple, this excitation on the surface. That's the particle. That's the Higgs boson. And it's a, it's a necessary product of the field, but the field is what's all around us, invisible all the time. And you only get the particle if you work really hard and produce this LHC, which is this great machine. And the LHC is the Large Hadron Collider. What, what's that about? Can you tell me a little bit about the Large Hadron Collider? Yes, yeah, so the, the Large Hadron Collider is, uh, is a ring of 27 kilometer long. And the reason being that large is because the energy is of the beams that are so high that it's like a very, uh, very fast train. You cannot really take sharp bends. You have to really use very large magnets to actually keep them in that ring. And the reason for the high energy is the higher the energy you take these protons, make them collide, then the more chances are that they can actually create something interesting at a high enough mass, like the Higgs boson mass, uh, to actually make more of those particles for you to actually detect them. So that's where the, the, uh, the, the, the Large Hydron Collider was built for. And the other problem is that when you go to higher energies, uh, the cross-section, which means that the, uh, the interaction rate is actually for a lot of other things actually going down to some level. So you have to actually get a very high intensity. So each beam actually is uh, equivalent to several trucks worth of uh, kinetic energy in the beam to actually allow you to produce enough events or the, enough of these interesting interactions for you allow to actually to see them. Okay. Now this is really a huge machine. In fact, we have uh, a picture of the Atlas detector. Can we show that picture, please? Uh, basically, we should have a slide of that. Okay, so there it is. And just to see the size of it, if you look really closely, there are two little people standing on top of the central shaft between that propeller-like structure on the left and the main body of the detector. Those two little figures are people, so that's just showing the size of the whole thing. Uh, is it possible to uh, get the technology simpler so Someday we'll have personal colliders, like we have personal computers? Uh, it may be a little bit difficult because uh, the, the main reason it's been that large is that for very high energy particle, it's very penetrating. It's from all the material, you take lead, you take gold, it still travel a very a great deal of length through those material before it stops. And when we try to measure the energy, we want to contain all the, all the showering of the particle within that material. So unfortunately, that you have to make the material thick enough so you can contain all the shower it made, so you can measure all the energy that actually got dumped into it. That's the reason it's been so large. Now, how do you get these particles to move at such a high speed, just a hair below the speed of light itself? Right, this is the, the role of the accelerator. And uh, uh, for that, there are various technologies being, being used to actually to, to push the, the particle at the higher, higher and higher energy through uh, the uh, superconducting magnet to actually accelerate them. But of course, when you uh, accelerate, there are a lot of other uh, effects you have to take in care of, such as there are many particles together, and they tend to repel each other. You have to keep them under control and so on. That's why it's a very complex machinery to actually allow you to take them at that high energy. Well, we spent several decades trying to find the Higgs boson. Now we found it, so are we done? Or are we looking for other things now? Well, uh, at the moment, I think uh, uh, we, there are many things uh, we're unhappy with the theory, and mm -hmm. I think Peter, Peter can comment later, is that we want to see what's beyond that. But for the moment, I think there is at least one piece of information we may talk about, like dark matter, mm -hmm. which is outside this bound of the standard model. Mm -hmm. And so we hopefully can use the, the Higgs boson as a, uh, a stepping stone to measure how the behavior uh, relate or the behavior of the Higgs boson or things related mm. to it to well enough so maybe we can get some hint whether there are some more stories beyond the standard model which is this is standard as the last piece in front of us. Okay. So now Peter let's talk about the theoretical side a little bit. Particle physics is about understanding the most fundamental objects in the universe so my understanding is that we have matter and energy which are roughly interchangeable with each other but is there anything that's more basic than anything else? 